Well, hello my friends. And uh, what I'm working with is a piece of river birch. This uh, was something I turned a couple of weeks ago um, and left it. Uh, I was going to be removing the foot and making a lid for it, but I'm not in the mood to do that. So. I'm in a mood to do and not what I should do. Um, I can tell you that the, I'm pleasantly surprised uh, considering this was a very green, a freshly cut tree. It stood very true. Um, no checking, no cracks, nothing. It's um, pretty much the way I left it. So I'm going to make another platter. This had some uh, nice comments from people. Uh, I don't know, a lot of likes on this uh, particular uh, video. Uh, is that I see people struggle. Uh, but I see people struggling or deciding on which way they are approaching with a tool. So maybe I can clarify that a little bit and give you a little bit of a uh, I don't know, an inside scene of, you know, to, to ease your way into the woods turning and perhaps, and I know that with time, it will come to you as well. Um, it, that's how it comes to everybody. Nobody can watch a single YouTube channel, one person turning, and nobody should be saying, this is exactly how you do it. These are only the approaches that we, that I use, my quote uses something uh, slightly different. It doesn't matter who you watch. They have a slightly different approach. My grind is very different from anybody's. People ask me all the time, Al, what is the angle of your grind? And I never know. I, because I know that once I established a grind that I liked by making slight adjustments, and once I got there, regardless of what that angle is, that's the angle I go for all the time. I never change that. But for you, that angle might not be a good angle because your stance or how you hold your tool or your approach, you know, there's, you know, you shouldn't be asking, oh, what's the grind? No, find the grind that you like and use it. Um, that's bottom line. My, my gouge is very, very acute angle on it. I mean, I sweep this thing way, way back. Way back. So it's not a traditional grind that a manufacturer uh, puts. Okay, I do have a protractor, but because I'm never in my sh my shop long enough, I don't know where it is right now. I would gladly give you that, but you can see that it's very steep. It's a, uh, I'm gonna guess, around 45 degree mark. That's the angle that my tool sits in, in relationship to my stone. So it's very acute, you can see that. Um, so, you know, if you want to do that, and then it's a matter that I sweep it way back into the wing, giving me this long, long fingernail uh, grind. You know, I got the Carter and Son, and this is the point that I'm making. The Carter and Son uh, sent me a 5.8 deep flute for me to try it out, the deep U. Beautiful tool. I really have not had to resharpen it, but I did so because I wasn't used to the angle that they gave me. So I went ahead and I gave myself the same angle that I already accustomed to. So I swept this back a little further. Uh, this was fairly shallow, fairly round, and I have it very pointy. But that's from my personal preference. You want to go that route? 
you just work the sides a little bit more find your angle first and then if you want to uh, go a little bit more pointy like that uh, you just work the sides until you get that and long enough there's a drawback to this when you're doing push cuts it's not as easy to control as something that's a little bit more rounded off in the front so there's the drawback but I like this control that I get with this cut because I've accustomed myself to it not because it's right or not because it's wrong it's all a matter of personal preference so today I have a leftover piece from that log that I did that droop over that I gave the instructions on undercutting. So I'm going to put this on the lathe and I'm going to do a fairly quick turning with this piece. Let's get started. And my finding is by balancing. Balancing the piece, making sure I'm not so heavy on one side or the other. If it does this and it stops and it doesn't pull itself back, it's centered. Plenty of pressure. I can't emphasize this more than I do. Tool rest. Because I'm going to be cutting in this direction, I put the tool rest more or less in that direction already. So, just keep it close. And as I start shaping, I'll move it up. I'm going to start it off with my Carter and Son uh, bow gouge. Start it at about 400 RPM. That's pretty stable. what's happening with the wood over here once I apply a finish to it this is going to pick up a little bit and these darker spots around the bark
<clears throat> it's not bad. No wild wow factors here. So, I don't know if I want to spend any more time in it. On it. It is what it is. I'm going to pretty much leave it like this. It's a little different. Uh, it's... I could not get a good clear vision of what I wanted to do with this. I know I did not want to waste all this wood. I know that this, if I went all the way down, would just make another natural edge bowl. I've done something similar to this, more of a, a round over, but never something that came up like a cone like this one. So what I was envisioning at first was keeping a flare out and making it like a vase inside of this. Um, I was actually considering going very thin on the bottom and wide it towards the top. Really flare it out. And I don't know if that's what would have done it either. Uh, it was a, a knot piece and something that wasn't screaming out at me as to what it wanted to be other than this shape that you see here. And that was the shape of the log. So no, no design factor here. The only thing I did was, like I said, cone this out in the middle. And I, it's not that I dislike it. It's that it just doesn't scream out at me in a wow factor. The checking going through here, which are stress checks from the heat, um, just the dust in there and the tool going back and forth, both on forward and reverse, created enough heat that it started checking out on me a little bit. And I don't mind that. That is probably, to me, the best feature out of the whole piece is actually these feather checks. Now, the ones on the bottom, uh, that's a little different. I wish they weren't there, but there's some checking on the bottom, and that was from the log being cut and its uh, natural shrinkage. This is uh, river birch. Um, I like the character of the wood. It's a little bit um, light in color. I'm sure that eventually this, if I let it stay outside, these dark streaks that are going through here off the middle uh, will really enhance the piece. So I'm going to let some of this uh, river birch stay outside and probably in uh, two, three weeks, I will do another turning and let's see what it comes up with. At this point, I don't know. I, I, I really don't want to work anymore. But what I will do uh, on it, what I'll do is finish sanding the bottom and take out the foot, give it a rub finish, and it will be a finished piece. <clears throat> you know, most of the time what I do is not to wow anybody or, uh, you know, show what incredible work I do. That's not my intent. My intent is to open up your eye and uh, uh, hopefully I can portray what is it that I look for since so many of you uh, comment um, you know I, I hate to say it but uh, you know think that I have somewhat of an artistic eye for it it doesn't happen all the time um, and sometimes it's just pure luck but anyway here's another piece to go amongst the not so desirable pieces. Again, it's not that it's a, a waste. It doesn't matter what comes out of the lathe. Whatever is created on the lathe, good or bad, wow factor or no wow factor, it's always another learning experience. You can never take a piece, put it on the lathe, and come out of it not realizing something a little bit different. Whether if it's design, whether it's if it's something you saw midway, you should have stopped that and changed the direction. Whatever. When you put, if you do upload, if you do record, if you go and uh, it's a, it's amazing. How many times I'm editing a video and during the editing 
is where I see something different that I did not see when I was on the late. And I, when I'm seeing that, it's like, oh my God, I should have stopped the piece there. Or I should have gone in that direction because that's where its full potential was at. And sometimes we are so focused on going in the direction that we, we think we want to go and lose, lose sight of any possibilities that the wood is offering you and you just ignore it. Um, you ignore it because your mind is set on which direction you want to go. Or you don't take a time and stop and look at it from different angles and see what's happening with a cut. And that's when we see the magic happening is during those phases. Like I said, many times I'm turning, I stop the lathe to talk or adjust a little bit and uh, I'm focused on that particular area and when I see it through another angle which is the camera angle I see something completely different than what I was seeing when I was just looking directly at the piece on the lathe. So I should probably look at the monitor every once in a while and see what is the camera seeing that I'm not seeing and go from there. And if I see something, it's like, oh, wait a minute, let me take a look at that. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that I saw that. Um, so, stop and smell the roses. <laughs> In this case, stop and look at the wood. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again very soon with another episode. Not going to be this wood. I think I'm going to make something very simple a little box I haven't done one in a long time and I got a nice couple of nice pieces of wood that I want to when I was driving home I had this idea of what I wanted to do and uh, again I think it would have been uh, an interesting turning and you know you get here and you see a piece of wood and like whoa that's what you know wants to go on the late uh, but uh, really, I want to do something that's a little bit special. I think I will do it this weekend and be able to upload it in uh, about two weeks or so. So make sure that you keep coming back and seeing what it is that I'm putting up. Don't forget, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And share it with your friends. That's what it's all about. Take care.